live streaming from the Kurimako or Taranaki sports page today and we have I have with me uh, Teihorangi Walden, the captain of the Taranaki Bulls in the Bunnings NPC 2021. Morena Tei. Morena. Kia ora Yeah, thank you for coming on Tei. Hey, uh, I see you've had uh, a couple of uh, games for Taranaki. Uh, the first one at Pukikura Park um, and you had a, a good win. Would you like to just reflect on that for our listeners? Yeah, um, I guess the, the best thing about that was it was the first game of the season. It's always nice to start with a win. So uh, it was even more of a bonus to play at Pukikura Park. Um, what an amazing venue to play at. And just in front of your home people and so condensed, everyone was close, close to the action and it felt like they were right there on the sideline with us. So um, we were very stoked with our first performance there. It took took well, took us a bit at the end to sort of um, get the win. But, yeah, we got there in the end. I think we had a good start, um, but we sort of let them in the game later. Um, so it was hard, hard watching from the sidelines at the end. I think it was a commendable win in terms of that team that you beat. Actually, uh, you had a playoff last year for promotion relegation so well done for the start of the season yeah um, thank you after that you traveled up north uh, i'd like to just reflect on that game yeah i uh, went up to play the tanifar up in Whangarei there and it's it's not an easy place to play we, i think the last two years for taranaki we've gone up there and we've lost so it was a big game for us um and we knew you're only as good as your last game so going up there we sort of had the mindset we're going to have to turn up and play uh, those boys never roll over and they come out firing at the start and I think we we're a bit slow to sort of get into the game. We sort of uh, made too many errors, tried to throw the ball around a bit and sort of got taught a bit of a, a bit of a lesson in the first half. But yeah, we came out in the second half and yeah, we, we were fortunate to sort of run away with the game in the end. But it, yeah, it wasn't easy, but we'll take the win. Yeah, well done. And uh, then you've had a couple of postponed games. Uh, last week you were supposed to play Waikato and uh, tomorrow... Uh, being Saturday, you're supposed to play Manawa too, but those two games have been postponed. And your next game, of course, is against Counties Monaco. Uh, I suppose you and the team would be looking forward to that? Yeah, I think we, we are really excited about um, the season ahead because obviously, like I said, we got off to a good start. So it'd be nice to carry on and um, get a few more wins for the boys. Um, but yeah, we're like everyone else, sort of a bit uncertain around what the rest of the season looks like. But um the main focus at the moment is just making sure the boys are all healthy and spending time with their families. And um, yeah, hopefully we can get back out there soon and do what we love. Right. In terms of team, how, how are, you, are you keeping together in any way or form? Are you not allowed to get together to sort of practice? But uh, individually, have they got uh, specific programs or is everyone just doing their own thing like you are doing? And maybe you could tell uh, those that are watching um, what you're up to. Yeah, no, no, it's a bit mentally of, and physically fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's yeah, uncertain times, obviously with COVID. Like I said earlier, so um, we're just sort of remixing things and having to do our own sort of gym sessions at home and just sort of freestyle what we've got. Obviously, a lot of boys don't have um all the equipment that we do have when we're together as a team training. So, um, boys have been keeping in touch via Zoom and on on our whatsapp and whatnot just to check in on each other and make sure everyone's doing all right but yeah. it's sort of just um up to the individuals to sort of make sure they keep keep fit um during these times we don't know how long it's going to go for so um boys are chucking up their workouts that they're doing just trying to encourage each other to sort of do the mahi as well so so far so good we're sort of one and a half weeks in and there's been a lot of content popping up uh, boys all seem pretty pretty happy and um enjoying the family time but everyone's dying to sort of get back out there as well so hopefully all going well the uh, announcement this afternoon is good and we can sort of get back into our rugby in the next few weeks um but yeah we're just sort of working hard by ourselves and just trying to encourage each other to do the same so when we do get back out there we're good to go and we can carry on that form we started with yeah well we hope you can get back into gear too as soon as because as a supporter i mean uh, we're all looking forward to the bulls uh, playing uh, for the rest of the season, and hopefully they do well. Now, you're a co-captain, uh, is that correct, along with Mitch Brown. Um, what responsibilities does that carry for you? 
Yeah, no, it's sort of, um, I'm, it's a proud, proud responsibility to have. Um, to be captain of any team is pretty special. And to be the captain, of, uh, co-captain with Mitch of Taranaki Bulls is awesome. Both of us were sort of grew up here in Taranaki and this region means a lot to both of us. So, um, yeah, like I said, pretty special. For the responsibilities, I guess, it's more just the leadership on the field, um, making sure that we're making the right decisions, um, whether it comes to sort of tactics in the game, making sure we're playing, playing the right tactics or having to change them on the go. Um, but yeah, both of us are fairly experienced at Mighty 10 Cup level or Bunnings NPC. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoy sharing the role with Mitch because we can sort of bounce off each other and um, help each other out. Okay, and just reflecting back on your rugby career, since you left Francis Douglas College, um, you went to Otago University and um, played for Otago. Um, I think they were called the Razorbacks, I'm not too sure. Um, <laughs> Otago Nuggets, or is that cricket? I'm not too nah, sure. But anyway, yeah. and then the Highlanders, and uh, you had some, I saw a couple of games that you played, and you played really well uh, during 2016. And then uh, Taranaki in 2018, and uh, captain now. So uh, that's a credit to you. Now, just reflecting on Francis Douglas College, I hear that you've done a bit of coaching with the first 15. Yeah, I guess last year sort of, Ran out a little bit of a luck and I got an injury. I snapped my Achilles playing for Taranaki here in that Shield game. So it's sort of, um, as rugby players, it's always good to have a plan B. And I guess I've, done, I've been to uni and sort of done my degree, but I've also wanted to be a rugby coach one day. So I um, thought, why not sort of go back to my old school and sort of help out and see if see if I can yeah teach them a few things. So um, my brother's a teacher at Francis Douglas. So I went back oh, and right. helped. That's Josh, yeah. Yeah, Josh, Josh, my older brother. So uh, him and I sort of joined forces and um, took on the role of coaching the first 15 and really enjoyed it. It was um, very, it was sort of a learning curve for me. I sort of um, loved going back there and it sort of made me, well, reminded me of sort of my days at the college and how much I loved rugby and just more the, um, the friendships you make through high school and just getting to spend time with them in the weekends as well. So... Um, it was nice and refreshing, uh, kept me busy, and I uh, really enjoyed the experience. It was good that you were able to link up with Josh again, because uh, when you were at Dunedin, I saw you and him in a team, I think your club team, I can't remember what uh, the name yeah. of that club was, but you played together and you had a good win that particular day, and yeah. your uh, dad and I were down there for other business, and we were able to catch up you. To me, that was... Uh, uh, very good for me because we were inside that stadium that, uh, you know, you don't get wet when you go to play rugby, although it was quite breezy. Um, yeah. So how did you enjoy your time in Otago? or Dunedin? I've, got, I've got plenty of fond memories down south. Um, one of them was playing with my brother. Him and I both got to don the Otago rugby jersey one year as well. So that was a special memory for myself and our family. So that was epic. But like I said, I went down there for university in 2012, I think, um, and just really, yeah, got amongst the university life. Um, it's awesome, awesome culture down there and met some great people through uni. Um, but I was fortunate enough to sort of be involved in the academy with Otago as well and yeah. sort of gave me a taste of professional rugby and it sort of changed my mind around what I wanted to do. I was sort of more leaning towards the rugby side of things and found out that I could sort of make a career in, in rugby. So, um, yeah, joined that and then played for Otago for five years in the end and played for the Highlanders for five five seasons as well. So, um, yeah, plenty of fond memories down there. Met some great people. Um, and, yeah, I love, love Dunedin. It's a cool place. Well, that certainly put you in good stead to be captain of uh, the Tanaki Bulls. So, yeah, well done. Now, while you were down there, um, what antics did you get up to? Did you chase the Jaffers down that big steep hill at any time? <laughs> I don't know if I can report the antics we got up to back in the day. Um, no, plenty of, plenty of good stories. And uh, we'll often catch up with uni mates and reflect on the times we had um, over a few beers. So, yeah, like I said, I probably can't tell those stories we got up to, but there was plenty of good ones. Um not only with, with the rugby side of things, but, yeah, off the field too, meeting people from all around um, New Zealand. And, and the cool thing about uni was you build these connections and still to this day you bump into people that you're at uni with and in random places. So I go to Auckland, I, I see someone I went to uni with and 
um, yeah, no, no, plenty of plenty of fond memories. Now, during your rugby career, you've also played for the New Zealand under twenties, and you visited France, um, toured France, and uh, next year they have the World Cup there. And uh, yep. any intentions of sort of revisiting France at any time, either yeah. as a uh, supporter or maybe you could make it make the team. <laughs> Absolute bolter. No, yeah, I'd, I'd love <laughs> France, but. That's, I think that's one of the, the beautiful things about the game of rugby um, is that we get to travel to these countries that I never would have thought I would get to um, as a young fellow growing up. So, yeah, I'm fortunate enough to have been to travel to many places around the world, but France being one of those. And I love my time over there. We spent, I think we're sort of over in France for just under a month um, playing in the World Cup for under-20s. So... It was a special time. I had my uh, family come over as well, so I got to share that memory with them, which was pretty special. Um, but, yeah, it, it is awesome. And I love the travel, and hopefully I can do a bit more of it yet. And the other thing was that uh, you've also played for the Māori All Blacks, and uh, any reflections in, in terms of that experience? Oh, it's an incredible experience. Um, and it's, it's probably my proudest achievement as a rugby player, um, Hone, is playing for the Māori All Blacks. It was, a, it was a dream of mine growing up. It wasn't necessarily playing for the All Blacks, but I always loved the Māori All Blacks, loved the haka. And as soon as I got into that environment, it was just, yeah, it was unreal. Um, just having that connection with the boys already through our uh, Māori whakapapa and whatnot. And then just learning more about our culture and singing waiata and connecting that way was pretty special. And it, it doesn't take long, as you're aware. It sort of takes a day and then you sort of feel like family already. So... Um, yeah, I was fortunate enough to play for the Māori All Blacks for three seasons. So, yeah, it's definitely a great team to be a part of and something I'll, uh, I'll yeah, hold close to my heart for the rest of my life. Well, that's, that's tremendous. And you've certainly been on the high in terms of your career. It's not finished yet, so I wish you all the best. Now, yeah. just finally, I'd, I'd like to just hand back to you if you'd like to say a few words to Fano or anyone else out there who might be uh, watching uh, this live stream. Uh, and then we'll conclude there. Thank you very much. No worries. Awesome. No, no, just probably just to everyone, just make sure everyone's keeping safe out there during these times. Um, it's a great chance to connect with Fano and spend some family time within our bubbles, obviously. But um, yeah, just enjoy the downtime while we can and make sure we're sort of checking in on our mates. Probably the most important thing, even if it's just a phone call, um, it'll make someone's day. So hope everyone's keeping well and hopefully we can all um, connect up soon once we're out of out of this well, thank you, Te, uh, listeners. Uh, that's Te Horangi Walden, uh, and we're live streaming on the Kore Mako Sports Show Facebook page. So uh, without any further ado, thank you, Te, and no all worries. the best to all of you out there, and as Te said.